at Bradgate Park, Jane would grow into an attractive young woman. Pretty and petite, she had auburn colour hair and fair, freckled skin. But she was far from being just a pretty Tudor face. She was bright and she was unusually well educated for a woman in the 16th century. Growing up here, bookworm Jane would have had no inkling as to her fate. Henry VIII had three living children. The prospect of his obscure great niece claiming the throne would have seemed simply absurd. Does it matter that the King's speech glosses over Bertie, George VI, support for Neville Chamberlain's policy of appeasement towards Adolf Hitler? Or more seriously, that in Henry VIII, Ray Winstone, apart from playing the King as an East End gangster with an accent to match, also adds a totally fictitious and brutal rape scene? As a historian, it should and does raise my hackles, especially when these films claim to be telling historical truth. The film The Queen cuts to real archive footage after the death of Princess Diana, and Elizabeth by Shekhar Kapoor features text both at the beginning and end of the film, situating it in a moment in time, even though in fact that film plays fast and loose with historical truth. They're taught now to write very short essays. I mean, when I did A-level history quite a long time ago, you had to do three hours and oh, four wow. essays, and now they have to do, um, at least for part of it, an hour and 15 minutes. And they have to get a lot done during that time. They have to be capable, but they don't have to write at any length, mm -hmm. and they're not required to think about things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a real problem. How do they pass it if they can't spell? Uh, I think more and more spelling is Irrelevant. overlooked spelling in terms marked. of no. yeah, uh, yeah, it's a spelling count. amnesty. Yeah, as long that, as you can it? just get the ball over the net, you can be understood. Mm. What's extraordinary about this is that it's not done up at the back at all. <laughs> and already I feel like I can't breathe. Good lord. They're, they're a lot tighter than I thought it would be. <laughs> I thought laughing isn't a good idea. That so Queen that. Victoria had a series of gestation corsets that expanded as she got more and more pregnant. But for ordinary women who couldn't afford that, they'd carry on wearing their own corsets. Bit of a workout for you back there as well, isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> OK, let's, uh, let's try this out. Yeah, this is just bizarre. It's like I'm holding my breath all the time. It really holds me upright, completely sturdy. And what you have to imagine, see, this is only half of it, you've also got to put on... Imagine a huge crinoline skirt now. Actually, to be honest, all I, all I want to do is, is to go and sit down. But that's just the beginning, because then we have the drawing. What, what happens there? The drawing is essentially what we call disemboweling. So a cut across the abdomen, which would expose the intestines. And this must have been extraordinarily painful. Surely this must have killed you. No, it wouldn't. You don't have major blood vessels in the front of your abdomen, which could bleed heavily and kill you. So how long can you live like this, then? Without treatment, maybe 24, 48 hours. You can live you... for 24 to 48 hours with your stomach, with your guts coming out? Yep. And it worked. The peasants were pacified, and King Richard II stayed on the throne for another 18 years. And the tower's defences didn't fail. Instead, the doors were simply flung open, and the mob rushed in and tore the Archbishop of Canterbury apart like a pack of hyenas. You see the Landau. You see the kiss on the balcony. Would you agree with that, Susanna? Well, yes, I think Kate will take possession of people's hearts, if she hasn't done already, mm. just as Diana did. And, and you mentioned the reading, and I just thought that was spectacular. But, you know, James Middleton gave that reading from Romans. And I thought it was really interesting they'd chosen that because it, it spoke about living in harmony, it spoke about not being afraid to associate with the lowly, not being haughty and living peacefully and it, it seemed to be as a bit of a manifesto for the, the two of them and how they want to live and in fact reflecting qualities that of course we saw in Diana. The records are still held here at the National Archives. Right, let's have a look at this. So these are trial documents from Mark Smeaton's trial and the trial of Anne Boleyn. For Anne's trial, 2,000 people packed into the Great Hall at the Tower to hear about sex and scandal in the royal family. Anne was now accused of adultery with five men, not to mention incest. And one of the things it particularly tells us about is that she procured and incited her own natural brother, George Boleyn, J. 
gentleman of the Privy Chamber to violate her, alluring him with her tongue in the said George's mouth and the said George's tongue in hers. So that's rather graphic, isn't it?